Good afternoon, traders and investors. Will back here with another one. Hope you guys are doing well. Coming to you with a Wednesday market update. So today in the markets here, guys, Bitcoin ETFs finally get approval. So in today's video, we'll be going over a few of the ETFs that will be put onto the trading floor as of tomorrow morning and the management expense ratios associated with those fees. A lot of the issuers giving heavy discounts for early investors. So we're going to take a look at that. Also, big day tomorrow here, guys. CPI going to come in tomorrow morning, 8.30 a.m. Eastern. So a lot of traders anticipating lower than expected CPI. We're going to take a look over the estimates on that and how it potentially affects the rate cut probabilities for the March meeting. The January meeting coming up in just a few weeks is supposed to just be flat, meaning no change, but all the expectations are for a rate cut in March. So we're going to take a look at those probabilities as well. And of course, guys, go over our major indexes here, see how everything performed and our major tech names to wrap it all up. So without further ado, guys, let's get right into today's video. Now, green day in the markets here today, guys, right? The bounce simply continues. SPY up 0.57%, QQ up 0.68%, and green across the board, healthcare and financials continue to be leaders in this current uh, market environment right now. And even the Russell here ending the day green. So bounce still underway here, guys. Very healthy bounces. We're going to go over those in the technicals as well. On the, as a whole, guys, you can see here on the market breadth, it was a very decent day in the markets. Big tech leading the way once again. Financials, healthcare, decent performance, but very nice broad market recovery into the day as a whole. On the one day relative, you'll see that all the major sectors are pretty much in the green, almost erasing last week's losses entirely for a lot of these sectors here, guys, right? You can see that on the one week relative performance, only basic materials and energy remain red after last week's performance. Yes, we do have a few more days in. And and CPI, any negative news on CPI tomorrow could be a heavy red catalyst for the markets, but the expectations are supposed to be fairly bullish here. So looking at the markets here, guys, what are we expecting for tomorrow? Well, let's go over that right away in terms of your CPI, right? So CPI going to be a big day. The estimate for the, the estimate for the year over year comparison for December is 3.2% here, guys. So we're going to be wanting this to either come in in line or slightly lower for a bullish look. And any number over and above this could have a negative reaction to the markets. If it's just a few basis points above, like 3.3%, let's say, I don't believe that's going to be such a negative impact. But definitely if we come in over, let's say 3.5, a heavy miss, well, expect the markets to definitely react negatively to that and potentially have some influence here on your potential rate cuts, right? Any negative read on CPI just delays the possibility at some rate cuts. So we have some charts here. As you guys know, every single CPI session, we go over this inflation steadily on the downtrend. You can see this is the trailing 12 months. Inflation still steadily on the downtrend. This is your expectation for tomorrow. And you'll see we're almost pretty much back down here to the levels we hit in June and July. The expectation for end of 2024 by the Federal Reserve itself is supposed to be around 2.5%. And that's measured on their preferred, uh, preferred CPI uh, measure or their, the measure of inflation that they prefer the PCE is supposed to read about 2.5 CPI still supposed to be right around the 2.93% mark leading into December of 2024 so any extra uh any extra downfall in inflation well will obviously tip the Fed's hand into potential further rate cuts the amount of rate cuts that they'll be allowed to do over the course of this coming year. You can see this as well here. Consumer price index versus your median estimate in the past 12 months. So usually guys, we've always come in below expectations as a whole for the past 12 months here. So I don't expect to, uh, tomorrow to be any different from that. Usually the surveys and the expectations are pretty adequate and pretty on point. They survey a lot of businesses and um. They survey a lot of businesses here and research bureaus at the same time to get a fairly adequate number. So that's why I'm not expecting uh, a large miss here to uh, inflation here tomorrow, especially not to the upside, considering um, over the last two quarterly earnings, guys, a lot of companies have been reporting a diminishing uh, consumer spending here on discretionary spending reports. So I don't believe other than the fact that it is a holiday month, this is the December read on a 12 month trailing basis, it's obviously going to be lower. Could we have a slight little uptick here in relation to November? Yes, that's why it's said to be 3.2. November is with 3.1. But I don't expect something blowing out of the water here in terms of the holiday sales and whatnot, guys, we didn't really have substantially crazy numbers this year. So I'm not expecting inflation to come on the rise as a result of in um, consumer spending here. 
And here's another very decent chart here. You see the percentage, uh, the number of S&P 500 companies citing the word inflation on earnings calls versus the quarterly CPI. So that's going to be your quarterly CPI is the blue line right here. As you can see, steady, nice little downtrend into the lower 3% range ever since your peak in 2022. And the number of companies citing that inflation was a problem has been steadily on the decline as well. So that is exactly what you want to see. Obviously, Q1 earnings will be starting here on Friday with your financials. So curious to see if people still if company executives are still saying that inflation is going to be a problem for 2024 or if they see that largely going away now in terms of the company earnings guys we reiterated yesterday this earnings season is going to be all about company guidance for the fiscal year of 2024 more specifically eps and profit margins are going to be front and central because the most recent negative data that we've had from companies is the fact that they've said that discretionary spending is down so they'll want to keep their top line revenues as high as possible even if that does require uh, decreasing prices or holding prices flat for the year that can potentially erode margins so that is going to be the key guys it's going to be profit margins for all of your favorite companies this quarter and we'll take a look on all your big earnings on the channel of course here and just take a look at this here for guys tomorrow this is the fed rate watch tool from the cme group's website so this is directly from the fed the expectation here this is for the march 24 ending meeting take a look at january january is said to be 96 percent that the Fed is going to stay pretty much flat on the rate uh, for currently. But in the March meeting, this is when we may get our first cut. Currently, it stands at about 65% probability that we do get a 0.25% interest rate cut here and tomorrow if we get bullish cpi meaning lower or as to expectations this probability may increase once again just a reminder that if cpi continues to trend to the downside it leads the fed on a path that they will be able to decrease rates faster than expected so tomorrow if we get a bullish read on cpi expect this probability for march to go up in terms of them being able to reduce by 0.25 and markets will definitely love that as well so that being said, guys, let's take a look at our major indexes and see how the bounce is going. So I won't be going over in such big detail as we have been going the last few days here when the bounce was started. You guys should know the drill if you've watched the past few videos. So the size of the bounce was key. And now you see here on the S&P 500, the bounce has now engulfed the entire selling move. So we were looking when the, bear, the bulls lose the daily uptrend, we need to measure the size of the bounce. When the bears take over this with the downswing, we're expecting a lower high and then can the bulls hold the lows? Well, the size of the bounce was key. We were expecting a high enough as possible bounce to give the bulls the best shot at reversing this back into a daily uptrend. And now with a almost 100% engulfing move here, very close to your all-time highs. Once again here, only about 0.5% off the all-time highs. The bulls are set up beautifully for either the V-shaped recovery or at least the two-step here. CPI is going to be crucial here tomorrow. The bulls are still in control of your shorter-term time frames. Hourly uptrend just continues. So keep an eye, guys, into tomorrow if the hourly trend continues. If CPI is bad and we lose this hourly uptrend here, well, your daily consolidation will start to be underway. And at that point, we're looking for a higher low, anything above 466.40, just looking for a higher low for a bullish daily uptrend reversal. All in all, bulls in full control at this point. Weekly higher low is set right now at that level that same 466.40 that we were talking about so weekly uptrend is just continuing at that point so keep an eye on cpi tomorrow big day now qqq qq much the same right the bulls lost the daily uptrend daily lower lows were set in relation to our 403 level right so the bears engulfed and now the bulls with a very beautiful bounce hourly bulls are still in full control of this hourly uptrend so as long as they control this hourly uptrend your daily bounce is simply continuing now in terms of the size of the move that they recaptured not as much as spot but we have caught back 80% of the move. I'll remind you, anything above 618 level is very, very bullish. It opens the door for the bulls to create enough space to set a daily higher low and back into a daily uptrend. And now we're almost at 80%, so the probabilities are even higher. Meaning, if for ever which reason tomorrow is bearish and we lose the hourly uptrends here, set some hourly downtrends, your daily bounce will be finished. Then we're looking, can the bulls set a higher low for daily trend change attempt? They have created enough space at this point, anything above 395.50-ish is going to be looking for a higher low for daily uptrend attempt well above your moving averages at this point and now recapturing your four hour moving averages as well i'll remind you the four hour 12 ema is key it's been the level that was the one to watch since the entire move in november so just keep an eye on that if ever we do get a little bit of a retrace here guys 405 404 going to be a nice little level that the bulls can play some defense at
but QQQ looking very good. Moving on to XLF, XLF doing what XLF has been doing for the past pretty much 11 weeks in a row, right? Continuously on the rise here, up another 0.16%. So the daily higher highs and higher lows are still being set currently, right? Just looking for a daily higher low at this point. Anything under your, over, uh, under your previous low here, right? 37.42, just looking for a daily higher low, reacting nicely from your daily 12 EMA. And this 12 EMA, guys, look how much this thing has held up ever since this rally, right? So this is gonna be the line in the sand level for me, and it's quite close to our 37.40 previous higher low. So daily uptrend is still underway. Bulls are in full control. Just keep an eye, guys, on your lower time frames, right? Need the bulls to keep these lower time frames. This is very, very, very choppy on the hourly. You see it best on the four hour. We're still in a bit of a sideways tightening range here, right? But the daily bulls are still in control, not by much. It's getting very tight here at the top here. We've pointed out uh, in yesterday's video, right? A bit, a bit, a bit of bearish divergence, right? Higher highs on the chart, lower highs on the RSI. Usually that's a bearish pattern. We also have somewhat of a bit of a ascending wedge. And usually this is also a bearish pattern here. They can break bullish here, guys, especially in this current market environment. And especially when your higher time frame bulls do control uh, most your monthly and your weekly time frames as well. So we're keeping an eye on that. A little bit of a bullish, uh, a bearish lean here uh, on this chart right now. Doesn't mean that it can't go higher, guys. The one thing which will be key to watch is if XLF does break this, keep an eye, they do have earnings on Friday. So in Friday, in my opinion, is gonna be make or break for these bearish patterns, right? It's either going to break through and we're gonna break through for more bullish highs here, which is going to negate any single negative technical uh, aspect that I've just pointed out here. But if ever we get a little bit of a reach to the downside off of bearish earnings, let's say, well, that'll just be very healthy weekly consolidation, 37 and 36 level is the area to watch in that case. And if XLF pulls back, guys, you want to see QQQ continue to go on the rise here. You want to see that healthy rotation happen while QQQ was pulling back over the past five days or so, right? In the last week, you can see XLF has maintained its gains. So now if XLF decides to take a little bit of a breather here and set some uh, daily lower lows and lower highs and go into weekly consolidation, you wanna see QQQ pick up the slack. Now moving on to healthcare. Healthcare looking very good again here, guys. Healthcare just on a monster uh, rip here for the past 10, 11 weeks as well. 0.5% to the upside here today. Daily uptrend simply continues at this point, guys. Got the daily higher low. Now moving on to higher highs, right? Any pullback at this point, gonna be looking for a higher low. Anything above 138.50, just looking for a higher low for further trend continuation at this point. No signs of slowing down just yet. Also, the only red flag here is a little bit being overbought on the RSI here. There's no divergence per se, but we are slightly overbought here on the RSI. On the weekly though, we still have a bit of room to move here and we are approaching a big area of resistance here. We're almost right there here, guys. This is the high right here, 141.85 and perpetuated with your all-time high resistance as well, about 142.90, 143 as well. So we're getting up to that resistance area. I don't know if the bulls have enough juice after such a heavy move to really crack this all-time high area in one shot without potentially doing a little bit of a pullback first and then rise, but we'll see obviously what happens here. Bulls in full control as of now, no red flags. Keep an eye guys on your lower time frames, right? Just keep an eye on your, uh, excuse me, wrong chart here, four hour, four hour 12 EMA is going to be the guide. Look how well the bulls have held this this entire time. So if we do lose this set of four hour downtrend, that's when you know daily consolidation is likely underway into potential weekly consolidation as well. But bulls with tons of space here, guys, right? Anything pretty much above 122.80, just looking for a uh, higher low here for further trend continuation into 2024. Looking very good. IWM Russell, IWM Russell not looking too bad here, but obviously not participating uh, as much as SPY, QQQ, XLF, or XLV. Still trapped at the lower end of this move right here. So we were measuring the size of the bounce on IWM. IWM getting the weakest bounce, not even making it up to the 0.38 um, FIB level, right? What that means is just if we were to roll over in these markets, as of now, the bears are favored for a daily downtrend continuation. The bulls have not put in enough of a bounce to give them a chance at a daily uptrend reversal here. But if the markets do continue bullish here, guys, you may see the rare case where the bulls set the higher low here and potentially resume into a daily uptrend here, even with this low bounce size. That is fully dependent on the rest of the market. CPI tomorrow can obviously tilt this uh, either which way here, but the probabilities do favor lower low right now, but IWM is probably not going like, to be left behind, guys, if the rest of the markets rally hard off of CPI tomorrow. So just keep that in mind. We're still struggling with this previous resistance range, guys. This red box has been a very, very big contested zone over the past two years, 
pretty much, right? Big support back here, resistance, resistance, resistance. And now not able to break and close above on the weekly above this, so we're down below this now. If we do, for ever which reason, get negative print tomorrow on CPI and the market pretty much uh, has a little bit of a downturn here, guys, and we do get the daily downtrend follow through, I'm expecting this level to act very, very nicely here. 187 down to 182. That's my sweet spot for buying the Russell personally. But as of now, just bulls really holding the lower levels right here not allowing the bears. It's been now a couple days, right? Where the bears have tried to make lower lows, but are getting rejected here. So we'll see, can they really get a nice hourly uptrend going after tomorrow and really get this bounce size being a lot healthier? That is what we're watching into tomorrow. And lastly, our Dow Jones. Dow Jones playing beautiful defense of the 12 EMA. This kind of looks like healthcare as well, right? And financials never losing the 12 EMA on the daily ever since the rally started back in November. Dow Jones looking very healthy right here, right? No divergence whatsoever. Currently not setting higher highs on the charts, really, even though the RSI is setting lower lows. So no divergence as of now, no bearish indicators as of now either. This is just very healthy, tight, tight, tight consolidation cooling off of the daily RSIs during that process and really setting almost pretty much a perfect weekly bull flag in my opinion, right? So Dow Jones bulls are in full control, right? Daily uptrend is still underway. Now we're going to be looking for a crack of the all-time highs, 37,800 will do that. And if we do get a pullback here, guys, target this line in the sand, 37 to 37. Break that to the downside. Daily downtrend is started at that point. Further weekly consolidation will be expected, and weekly consolidation would just bring us in to our previous all-time highs, in my opinion, 36,900-ish, down to about 36,300-ish, uh, this whole yellow box right here. 12 EMA is right down in there as well, and that would be a very healthy weekly bull flag here, higher low into further continuation for 2024 here, guys. No red flags whatsoever. Dow Jones looking beautiful on the monthly breakout as well here, guys. No red flags. Dow Jones set up perfectly for continuation here. CPI tomorrow, big, big, big catalyst to either send us through the lows, daily downtrend into further consolidation or just new all-time highs, continuation of this daily uptrend. Now moving on to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin ETF approval has been done, but Bitcoin, not really a sell the news event here, guys, right? It kind of did absolutely nothing. So this is today's trading candle. The fake news yesterday actually had us uh, in a more volatile situation than pretty much all of your trading here today, right? So very, very, uh, very, very healthy consolidation here by Bitcoin. Daily uptrend is still underway. Lewis looking for a daily higher low here at this point, guys. Anything pretty much above uh, 42,611. This low right here is just looking for a daily higher low for further trend continuation. Daily bulls are in full control. Weekly, weekly bulls are looking great. Smash this weekly bull flag right here to the top. Weekly uptrend simply continues. And now with the ETFs, guys, a lot of beautiful opportunities for investors and institutions to be getting in to Bitcoin. So here it is. The SEC officially approves Bitcoin ETF proposals for real this time after the fake news yesterday, right? So the SEC gave the green light to 11 issuers that applied for uh, Bitcoin ETF funds in the first wave of approvals here, right? So here are a few of the issuers and their respective management fees, okay? So you see ARC21 shares Bitcoin ETF here. That's pretty much our ARC issuer by Kathy Woods. The fee for getting into Bitcoin is going to be 0%. Now there's a little kicker here. They're offering discounts for the first investors, but there's a cap to it, which they refer to as a, rate, a waiver. So this one, let's say ARC21, this is what you mean. If you want to see this one, it's an article on investors.com, guys. So just Google investors uh, business daily here, Bitcoin approval, and you'll get this table right here. Very good table if you're looking for the best ETF to invest in. And the waiver details are as follows as well, right? So stipulates six months or the first $1 billion, whichever comes first, you will get 0% management fee for investing in this. And then after the waiver is in parenthesis right here. So after either six months or $1 billion of assets under management in this ticker, that is when they'll only charge about 0.21. So the fees are still relatively low across the board. A couple guys really starting off at zero, right? You have Bitwise, you have Fidelity here starting off at zero. You have Invesco, right? BlackRock itself did not unfortunately start. Uh, this is the iShares Bitcoin Trust, the BlackRock filing, right? They're starting at 0.12 and then thereafter it will be 0.25%. Uh, so if you are an early investor here, guys, there are some good opportunities here. Invesco has the highest cap. It's six months or $5 billion uh, before they jump up to 0.39% here. But you can see the range really varies between after, let's say, all the fees and waivers are included 
uh, after the waivers are fulfilled, you'll see 0.2% all the way up to 0.5%, uh, which is going to be the Valkyrie one. This is pretty much the average. So I hope you guys are going to be able to, uh, to take this list if you ever you do want to invest and invest in the one with the cheapest MER, right? So very, very good, uh, very, very good um, motion today here by the SEC approving. It sets a lot of precedent. And Bitcoin was actually not the biggest mover here today. It was actually Ethereum. Ethereum was one of your larger movers here today, right? After the approval, because Ethereum is said to be the next, uh, the next crypto that is going to potentially have uh, an ETF. And how much money can the ETF bring in for Bitcoin while we're still on Bitcoin here? Well, Standard Chartered Analyst this week said the ETFs could draw $50 billion to $100 billion this year alone, potentially driving the price of Bitcoin as high as $100,000. My Bitcoin price target for the end of 2025, not this year, 2025 next year, guys, is over $100,000. Between $120,000 and $150,000 would not be uh, crazy, in my opinion, with the new inflows. And also, keep in mind, guys, we are nowhere near to the retail euphoria that we had back in 2020 and 2021. Nowhere near the institutional investment either. It's still kind of muted as of recently in terms of trading volumes as well. So hopefully this will uh, drive the trading volumes up as well. And $50 billion to $100 billion might seem like a lot, but Bitcoin's market cap currently, guys, is about $912 billion, right? So even if we do take the higher end of $100 billion over the course of the year of new investment, that would only be a 10% increase in the market cap of Bitcoin, right? from institutions. Obviously, it provides some great liquidity, but it's not going to be the thing that is going to heavily tip the scales in terms of the one-time investment. For that, we're going to need more market adoption here and more adoption of risk on assets. We're going to need more institutions to pivot from being conservative now with high rates. When the rates come down and people start going risk on again, that is when Bitcoin is really going to have its moonshot rally. Even though this rally has been nice so far, definitely, guys, it is still not the same level as 2021, right, as when we had that uh, pretty much rocket ship up to the highs here, still relatively muted here, guys, in terms of uh, the amount of people currently invested in crypto and the amount of people talking about crypto now. It's really a shadow of what it once was. So it'll be very interesting to see how high Bitcoin will go when we do get back up to those euphoric levels here. So Bitcoin looking very good here, running up into our resistance area, pretty much 47,000 all the way up to 52. That's going to be the area to watch. Big, big, big area of supply here. So that is going to be the area that I do think that Bitcoin runs into a little bit of resistance. Everything looking beautiful on the monthly monthly uptrend as well so that is pretty much what happened after the bitcoin approval here bull flag do potentially for another little rally into our resistance zone. Now moving on to Ethereum. Ethereum, one of the best names here performing. All of crypto had a very, very solid day here today, except for pretty much Bitcoin. Bitcoin was the most muted out of all of them. All the rest ran. You can't see it here because the day just reset on a lot of these, but so many of these uh, secondary coins, right? had phenomenal days yesterday, right? You can see Link here up 10% uh, here, Magic Token up about 15%, Matic as well up about 11%. So many big gains. Ethereum, 10 percent here on the day here guys ethereum with the breakout we are watching this tightening range as of yesterday now finally breaking out to the upside here guys upside target for resistance for ethereum is going to be right here right uh we're currently running into the first one just smashing that and then the next target for ethereum in my opinion guys is going to be roughly the 20 uh two thousand seven hundred dollar mark and then there's not really much up to about 3500 here guys so running into that area of resistance now looking very good weekly breakout of this weekly tightening range here weekly accumulation weekly bull flag and now you have your break continuation of the weekly uptrend here and monthly uptrend is looking absolutely gorgeous so just keep an eye here guys 2700 area previous support should now be acting as some resistance and then it's all the way up to about 3500 so ethereum love this break right here if we do get a little bit of a retest here guys that will be a beautiful buying opportunity for future leg up on ethereum so i hope you guys were able to pick up a bit of Ethereum here while it was consolidating this whole time. But Ethereum, definitely one of your major winners here on the day for Bitcoin ETF approval. Now let's move down to big tech here, guys, right? So big tech, very good day as a whole across big tech here, guys. Meta was actually the best performer, but let's take a look at them in order here. So Apple, Apple's bounce is still underway here, right? After the bulls have now captured the hourly uptrend, hourly uptrend is still just continuing at this point. So the whole time that we are in an hourly uptrend continuation, well, your daily bounce just continues at this point. Measure the size of the bounce here after this daily downtrend. Bounce needs to get up to about 189.28. If we can get all the way up to 189.28, the 618 FIB, well, it sets the bulls up perfectly for a potential two-step 
higher low, and then higher high into a new daily uptrend. The bears right now obviously control this entire daily downtrend. So now we have to measure the size of the bounce. That's going to be the key for Apple if they want to regain the, uh, the daily uptrend right here. If we were to top off the move right now, you could see the move is fairly shallow. So let's say tomorrow CPI is bad, and then Apple trends down to the lower side. Well, unfortunately, we've only recaptured about 40% of the move. It's not enough to guarantee the bull's capacity to set a new daily uptrend. As a matter of fact, the probability is if we to roll over tomorrow do favor a lower low for the bears but if we do pull back a bit lower here guys my sweet spot 181 down to 175 you guys know the drill we the weekly bulls are just looking to recapture as much of this weekly move as possible to reset the weekly uptrend as well here so apple looking fairly good but not out of the woods yet still a lot of work to do apple one of your weaker big tech names with tesla App AMD, AMD looking outstanding here, guys, right? Double top of your previous highs, but now engulfing 100% of the move. So the bulls are really doing a great job here. So hourly uptrend still underway. Now remains to be seen. The bears had a little bit of a move here on the day today here, right? So if the bears do set the hourly downtrend into tomorrow for some reason, your daily bounce is finished. We'll just be looking for a daily higher low for further trend continuation. Bulls have engulfed the entire move. So now either one of two things is going to happen. They're going to V-shape this past the previous 52-week highs, just continuing and setting the possibility up for a uh, breakout of your highs and then maybe retest them and run again for your new daily uptrend. Or at the worst case scenario, create enough space for a daily higher low for further trend continuation here, the two-step breakout right if we do pull back here guys target this area right here 12 ema is going to be crucial you see amd has rarely lost this entire time of the move so keep an eye on this area guys 142.75 pretty much down to your psychological 140 right previous resistance right here going to be acting as support as well so this whole little pocket 142 down to 140 should act as decent support amd looking amazing guys here right on the weekly as well weekly uptrend is well 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 in motion and now you have your weekly higher low set right here 133.64 so any pullback even on the weekly guys higher low for further trend continuation on amd amd looking gorgeous in my opinion amazon amazon full recovery as well amazon our second name fully recovering this move down so we were saying look at the size of the bounce and amazon bouncing in a very big way this was to be expected here guys a lot of these things except for apple everything had never lost the weekly uptrend so we were always looking for a weekly higher low for further trend continuation right and that's exactly what we're getting on a lot of big tech after the initial january profit taking we uh forecasted for the initial january profit taking we took it we uh, we were on top of the opportunities so hopefully you guys were able to get a little bit of the dips if not that's okay here guys always some opportunities to be had in the markets but amazon full recovery on this dip right now at this point guys one of two things are going to happen right either we're going to completely recover this break out of the highs retest this previous area right here 154 retest and just continue a daily uptrend or if the move tops out tomorrow if you lose the hourly uptrend into tomorrow with bad cpi let's say well we're just looking guys for a daily higher low bulls have created a ton of space off the lows daily higher low scout right anything above 144 just looking for a daily higher low for further trend continuation if we do pull back here guys your moving averages are down here the top end of this whole resistance area right the 148 range is right down here so gonna be tough for the bears to get back under that right now weekly higher low right now is set as well at that same 144 level so gonna be looking for further price expansion to the upside by the bulls and amazon bulls on the monthly is the best looking chart for now here amazon still a lot of room to run here guys right still 18 19 percent off of the all-time highs and this year for amazon should be a big 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 year in terms of eps recovery moving on to google google another name but google new highs right new highs google very beautiful move to the upside google had never lost the daily higher highs and higher lows right compared to the names that we've just lost right amd lost the lows lows right here right apple obviously lost your previous lows they even set the daily downtrend amazon had lost your previous low right here ever so slight with this low down here google and meta never lost the lows so that's the difference google daily uptrend confirmed daily higher low right here 136.88 now we have created a new high right now so if we do top out into tomorrow keep an eye on your hourly uptrend here if for whatever reason we lose the hourly uptrend with cpi well you're just going to be looking for a daily higher low anything above 137 just looking for a daily higher low tons of beautiful support down here 12 ema is down here 140 to 138 pocket is right down here as well you see that best on the weekly big 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 uh pocket of resistance here so bulls should be able to use this as support as well weekly uptrend was never lost as well weekly anything above 137 same
same thing. It's just going to be looking for a higher low for further trend continuation. And Google looking amazing on the monthly breakout continuation. So Google bulls are in full, full, full control until we lose the hourly uptrend here, guys. This daily upswing just simply continues. And the next area of resistance for Google, I'll remind you, is we're at it right now, right? 143.80. And after that, all time highs, 148 to 150-ish. Moving on to Meta. Meta performing very, very beautifully here today, 3.65% crushing your previous 52 week highs here, guys. So you can see, this is what I mean. Same thing, Google never lost the daily uptrend here, guys. Always looking daily higher low above 328.71, got the daily higher low, and now next daily leg up. So now, guys, any pullback at this point, gonna be for a daily higher low above 340. Tons of space to set a new daily higher low and previous resistance, 359 area, should be acting as decent support and your 12 EMA is gonna curl back up here as well. So meta full breakout mode right now. Weekly uptrend is absolutely gorgeous as well. Beautiful weekly uptrend. Higher low was set last week here, 340, same level pretty much. So if we, for some which reason, guys, lose the daily uptrend here and continue into some weekly consolidation, anything above 340.25 uh, is just gonna be for a weekly higher low, further trend continuation. I do think meta is gonna be able to pull a bit higher than that before another leg of weekly consolidation. Next weekly area, guys, we broke through 353 area, right? Now, or now the next area, guys, all time highs. And meta not that far away from all time highs right now. We're talking about three and a half percent from your all time highs. Weekly time frames, not that overbought just yet. And even on your daily, still some room to move. So meta looking absolutely gorgeous for continuation. And the monthly speaks for itself, full monthly uptrend. Now moving on to Microsoft. Microsoft, finally guys, we called it. We were having the bullish lean for the break of this range. Why? Because your monthly bulls were in full control, just a monthly bull flag for future continuation. Weekly bulls, full control as well. Weekly uptrend, consolidation, weekly bull flag at the top end of your move, right? Very tight consolidation. And now we get the break of this range, which had a bullish lean the entire time. So daily uptrend set by Microsoft. Any pullback at this point, let's say we hesitate at the all-time highs and pull back a little bit. Any pullback, just gonna be for a higher low, anything above 366.65, looking for a higher low and then potentially price expansion here. This is one of the best setups, guys, for a bullish swing trade, in my opinion, right, for a day trade, anything like that. Breakout of such a long consolidation range, breakout, or if you get a retest of the higher end of this range right here, 377.50, it's going to be a breakout touch and go, in my opinion, for Microsoft. Why? Your weekly uptrend is now gonna be confirmed by the bulls. Your monthly uptrend just continues after this beautiful two month monthly bull flag here. So going to be very, very high probability to trade the breakout retest of this zone and run a little bit further. You obviously have your previous all time high resistance, 384 coming up in just a couple dollars for Microsoft, but very beautiful performance. Bulls now back in full control of every time frame. Netflix. Netflix hesitating a little bit, right? Netflix, the past two days have pretty much been inside Monday's trading candle here. So Netflix still trying to set up for the daily trend change here, guys. The bounce has been decent from the most recent higher low, right? Our, our lower high, excuse me, because we were in a daily downtrend on Netflix. Now we measure the size of the bounce. Netflix has bounced about 80%. They touched that same level here today as well. So now if we do lose for some rich reason, the hourly uptrend, which is very, very just very, very choppy here on Netflix, right? Very, very, very tough to get an indication of which way uh, this wants to break. But if they do set a confirmed hourly downtrend into tomorrow, that would be a break of yesterday and today's lows here. If we do for some reason set the hourly downtrend, your bounce is finished and now the bulls have created enough space to set up for a daily higher low for further trend. Uh, for a potential daily trend change to the bulls here. Nice defense at the 12 at the 26 EMA. You can see Netflix has lost the 12 EMA a couple of times since the November rally, but it's playing good defense here of the 26. So very good defense by the Netflix uh, bulls here, right? So tomorrow CPI going to be absolutely crucial for this entire market. If we do get a break to the upside, if CPI is bullish, get a break to the upside here, guys. I do expect Netflix to be able to engulf similar to what we've just seen here. Amazon, Google as well. The engulfing move of the entire move wouldn't surprise me if that happens on Netflix. Why? Well, it has a bullish lean on the weekly, guys. Weekly uptrend fully in motion. Weekly lower high is currently being set with last week's trading for a 62-ish level, right? Just going to be looking for a weekly higher low uh, for further trend continuation here. And Netflix on the monthly, absolutely gorgeous here. Monthly uptrend is confirmed as well. So Netflix looking very, very, very good. The only thing that some people could say 
It might be coming is the head and shoulders pattern if ever we were to flush these lows. But that head and shoulders pattern, if it does occur for any which reason, guys, keep in mind we do have earnings here coming up in about two weeks. If ever we flush into this zone right here, guys, 450 down to 425, I'm definitely buying. That is just looking for a monthly higher low for further trend continuation. Moving averages are down there as well. Very, very decent buy location for me. Now moving on to NVIDIA. NVIDIA powering through again here, guys. 2.28% new all-time high on NVIDIA. NVIDIA looking absolutely gorgeous, guys. Very, very simple chart analysis. The bulls are in full control of everything here, right? So it was a daily downtrend. Now the bulls with the daily upswing, massive engulfing move here creating a ton of space. As soon as this move tops out here, guys, keep an eye on your hourly. As soon as you lose this hourly uptrend right here, your daily consolidation should be underway here. And then we're just looking for a higher low, anything of a 473 daily higher low for further trend continuation. Bulls are in full control. Weekly tightening range, weekly bull flag here. Defense of this 12 EMA led to the bullish break here. So weekly uptrend is now reconfirmed. Any pullback, we're looking for a weekly higher low above 475, 476 level, right? Weekly higher low and run. NVIDIA should have a bit more juice into it though. Monthly has just broken out very, very healthy. So I do expect a little bit more out of NVIDIA, right? Daily is just getting overbought now. Weekly still has room to run. Look how high the weekly can run sometimes on NVIDIA. Absolutely crazy. Even the daily, the daily can stay overbought for a considerable amount of time before it needs to pull back as well, right? Four hour time frame. Eh getting a bit rich, so could be expecting a slight little pullback, but I do expect NVIDIA to be able to just continue this. I'm targeting pretty much, right, even a bit more in the after hours right now. Next area is going to be uh, blue sky, right? 550 psychological resistance could be a potential mark here, but NVIDIA looking very good. Very, very good. No red flags whatsoever, guys. So just keep an eye on these series of daily higher highs, higher lows. Daily chart is going to be pretty much your guide. You know, just keep an eye. Slightly overbought now. Very tough for me to buy NVIDIA at its current price without getting a retest of your all-time highs. I'd be interested if we get a little breakout a retest, not saying it's going to go all the way back to 500 here, but if we do get a little bit of daily consolidation down here, 520 level, maybe able to find some good premium here on the 505s, 500 short puts. Now moving on to Tesla. Tesla battling guys tesla just still battling i don't think we're gonna get much heavy price action here much before uh wednesday tesla has been one of the big laggards here in tech right if you look at tesla divided by qqq which is sometimes what i look at when things are weak look at tesla divided by qqq and tesla tesla's performance in relation to the nasdaq pretty much very very muted here guys right for the last amount of time right we're all the way back to pretty much april pretty much back to April weakness in relation to QQQ, right? We had one event here in November, but everything was crushed in November. But April was really an anomaly for uh, Tesla. That's when they really dropped initially um, off of potentially bad guidance here. So now Tesla just very, very weak, not even able to outperform the NASDAQ. We need to see a recapture here of somewhat of a weekly uptrend, not even able to set considerable daily uptrends, right? Just a big chop zone. So Tesla very weak in relation to tech as a whole. And the weakness just simply continues here on Tesla, right? Daily downtrend now set by the bears at this point after having such a beautiful breakout daily uptrend, the bears come right back. Daily downtrend is confirmed at this point. So now any bounce guy is going to be looking to take out this guy right here, 241. If we can engulf this mark right here, engulf him, set up for a daily trend change, potentially that would be the best case scenario, but now stuck back in this range here, guys. 246 down to about 227. So looking for the bulls to recapture. Unable to set an hourly uptrend here, guys. So first things first, things first need to set a confirmed hourly uptrend here into the rest of the week. If you want to see a nice daily bounce starting to get underway, once that happens, target this guy right here, guys. He's your most recent lower high, now lower low. So we need to engulf as much as possible of this leg to set up for a daily trend change. Keep an eye, moving averages now above as resistance and you do have the 247 as resistance to the upside. That's why I say guys, pretty much everything's gonna be reliant here on earnings in two weeks. If we continue pulling down here, guys, I'm interested in Tesla. 230 down to 210 is pretty much my sweet spot. I wanna get as close as possible to 220 for writing premium. If I can get some premium, good premium down, 220 down to 210, I will be writing some options over next week for Tesla. And now our two last ones here, guys, Palantir and PayPal. So Palantir trying for the recovery play here. Palantir still with the daily bounce underway. So hourly uptrend, right? Lost it a bit here yesterday, but bulls recapturing this in a nice way today. So we're gonna see, can they perpetuate this hourly uptrend into tomorrow? We'll see here, guys, right? But 
Daily bounce simply just continues at this point for Palantir. We're going to be looking to get as close as possible to this level right here, guys. 1715 is absolutely crucial for two reasons. Not only is it previous support, now it's going to be acting as resistance here. But guys, that's the level we want on the FIB. That is your 618 level pretty much. If we can get as high as your 618 mark right here, it's right at this line. You can barely see it. 618 right in line with this yellow line if I were to erase it right we need to get as high pretty much 17 10 17 15 pull up if we can really pull up into that area right here as we did today ever so briefly we are going to have the best chance guys of whoops excuse me we're gonna have the best chance of resetting for a daily uptrend here back to the bulls and the bulls need it guys here because we've been in a weekly downtrend now for better part of the past two months so bulls are really looking to protect this lower area 15 50 down to 14 dollars is the range to protect so still looking for the bulls Bears have had the daily downtrend pretty much, except for this light exception where we recaptured it ever so slightly. Bears come right back, daily downtrend. So daily downtrends have been plaguing Palantir for a better part of the last two months. So we'll be curious to see, can we set the daily uptrend here back and really set some weekly lows in motion, recapture as much as possible towards 1850, most recent lower high to then recapture the weekly. So what sucks about losing the weekly uptrend, guys, is that it takes so long to reset that pattern, right? So Palantir earnings in February, we'll see most likely the next biggest catalyst for Palantir. But as of now, looking healthy, decent sized bounce, just need the bounce to come a little bit higher, close me into this $17 range, and then we'll have a bit more certainty that upon any pullback, the bulls can reset for a daily uptrend. If we do get that pullback eventually, guys, I will be writing more options here. 16 down to 15.50, I am interested lowering my cost basis on Palantir for the most recent $18 shares that we got. And now PayPal, PayPal fairly muted on the day here today. Nothing much in the after hours up ever so slightly. So we'll see how that plays into tomorrow. But I like the size of the PayPal bounce, right guys? So after having lost the, the bullish flag right here, right? Bullish flag, very nice tightening range. You were expecting bullish breakthrough, but the market fell apart early in the year. So now the bears, nice move down. The bulls, with a very healthy bounce size, right? Look at the size of this bounce. We're talking pretty much almost 80% bounce. So the bulls are set up nicely to set up a daily trend change. We have recaptured our short-term moving averages as well. That's the best case scenario. An hourly uptrend. At this point, guys, we had the hourly uptrend. And now PayPal doing what it does best on the daily, right? This tight consolidation range. Well, now it's doing it on the hourly. So we will see if we get an hourly break to the upside, perpetuate this hourly uptrend and continue this bounce north. But as of now, looking fairly good on PayPal. And we are still looking, guys, to protect the possibility of the weekly uptrend, right? Potential right here, your weekly low is set. Last week's low, 57.50 is gonna be the mark. So can we just continue this weekly uptrend? Break your $63, $64 mark. Continue this weekly uptrend right here into your $65 mark. That is crucial. Why? It is your weekly downtrending channel that's been here pretty much since August of 2022. So like a year and a half, guys, almost. That's what we're looking for on PayPal. So far, so good. Just keep an eye here, guys. PayPal highly dependent on rates. If CPI is bullish tomorrow and we get an increase in your probability for a rate cut in March, I do think that PayPal will be able to fully engulf this move, giving themselves the best chance here of resetting the daily uptrend and really cracking this uh, downtrending channel and really getting back above here. You can see this green line right here. That's your 200 daily moving average. We're so close to it now. We'll see if we can recapture everything at the same time. PayPal coming up to a very crucial level. So that's everything I had for you guys today. No portfolio update. Nothing has changed. So probably the next portfolio update will be on Friday. No new trades. Just going to ride them into CPI. I am fairly bullish for CPI, so we'll see what happens on that. So if you enjoyed the video, guys, consider liking the video, guys. And I really appreciate it for the YouTube algorithm. And as always, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing as well. Over 600 of you have subscribed so far. I appreciate each and every one of you for making this journey absolutely awesome. And as usual, guys, if you have any questions whatsoever, macro, technical analysis, stocks, specific stocks whatsoever, options plays, leave them down below in the comments and I'll be glad to answer you as soon as possible. So I'll see you guys tomorrow after the close. Keep a close eye, CPI tomorrow, most crucial thing ever. And then Friday, banking earnings. So last, big last two days of the week. Take care, I'll see you tomorrow after the close. Peace.